Hi, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to dive in and talk about the basics of teaching with an interactive read aloud. This is Alicia from Teaching and Tapas. I kind of want to just go right for it and get started. Um, I will say that the number one thing that uh, the, the number one place to start is look at the overall structure of your interactive read aloud. So an interactive read aloud is not just a read aloud. It's a specific focused lesson um, where you're teaching one skill or strategy, uh, not multiple. You're focusing in on one thing in a short lesson and teaching it by modeling how you use it in your own reading. So one as you're reading the text, you're going to be stopping three to five times in places where you can reflect or discuss how the strategy is used within that text. And you're going to give students lots of opportunities to engage and be interactive with the text. Um, that means you're going to give them opportunities to use hand signals, um, turn and talk opportunities, or um, time to stop and jot in their, in their journals. The next thing you have to know about interactive read aloads is that you has how to prepare for them. So you're starting your um, preparation for your interactive read aloud out aloud lesson with rich texts. You want to stay away from things that are you know not real that aren't written very strongly, like those Disney books where the story is based on a movie. It's it's not a rich text. It's not well written, it's kind of garbage, it's not really able a good text for modeling how um, people use reading skills. Uh, you can find your mentor text by going online and uh, looking for mentor text lists, or you can flip through your classroom library and find a text that gives uh, kids an opportunity to practice a skill. The way I started an interactive read aloud, like the prepare, preparing is I don't use uh, mentor text lists usually unless it's a tricky uh, skill or, or standard or strategy. I usually think about what I want to be teaching my students. Um, we're going to go over, uh, I'm going to show you a, a model interactive read aloud lesson. You think about what you want to be teaching your students and you can go flip through your books and yourself just read and think about what um, you want to be. Hi Meredith what you want to be teaching. So I flip through my, my stack of books and I'm like looking through my books and thinking, oh yeah, this one would be great for teaching something like that. And uh, then next you're going to uh, stop and jot three to five places in the text where you think that you can practice the skill. I say, don't ever have more than uh, five stopping points in a text because it's going to get really jumbled, the story gets lost, um, it's hard to follow. Uh, <laughs> hi, Meredith. Um, you definitely don't want to stop too often. The next thing you want to do is you want to be reading that text and listening to your own inner reader. So that's the most authentic way to do it. When you're listening to yourself as a reader and actually thinking about how you use the skill that you're trying to teach, your lesson is going to be extremely authentic. You're um, showing a, a true example of how you're using the skill. Um, number three, thinking about the actual lesson. When you're doing your interactive read aloud, you're going to keep it short. It's seven to 10 minutes maximum. And that means that sometimes you're not going to finish a book. Hi, Carrie. Um, sometimes you're not going to finish the story. You're really just going to zoom in on part of the text where you can sh you can model using that lesson. Um, and that's kind of a frustrating way to do It's kind of frustrating if the kids are really interested in the book. Um, but you have to remember that the purpose of the lesson is to be teaching a skill or a strategy. It's really not listening to the story and getting engaged in the story the same way you do on a regular read aloud. Um, and of course, you might have time built into your day where you are um, 
doing just a regular read aloud. You let the kids sit back and draw and, and listen quietly. They get lost in you know a longer ch chapter book. But in your interactive read aloud, it's focused on that lesson. Hi, Karen. Um, you can use that same book for so many lessons. It doesn't really have to be just um, just using this one day for this little short seven minute lesson. You can refer back to that same mentor text over and over throughout the year and your kids will remember it. It's fine to read it again. There's so much research that's saying that rereading text is amazing for kids. There's not, there's not anything bad that's going to happen from reading the same mentor text and using it in multiple, um, multiple lessons. Very good. Hi, Tabitha. Okay, so I'm going to um, use an example, just kind of pulled out an example of a mentor text-ish by Peter Reynolds. And um, I, today, when I, before, I, you know, five minutes ago, I started jotting down some notes about how I could show how to use a mentor, or how to use an interactive read aloud. And I thought, well, maybe I should do one that's talking about how to identify a character's inner thoughts or feelings. I just flip through my books that I have in my um, book bins right here, and I, it, it took me less than three minutes to find a book and be like, oh yeah, that's a great one. So I'm gonna kinda show you what I do. When I'm sitting down for the interactive with dog, I first choose that rich metro text, a really good book. And um, I identify the one strategy or skill that I want the students to be practicing or learning or what I want to be teaching about. So if I took the strategy, and I'm going to have my post-it notes. I'm going to have my post-it notes right there with me because I'm planning out three to five places to stop where the students would be able to practice the skill. Now, with that, you can be teaching, talking, um, giving the, the students an, a lesson about the skill before the text and after the text, and that's kind of separate from that stopping points of three to five places because um, you know, you're teaching a lesson. You can totally take your time teaching that lesson, but you just don't want to be stopping the story so many times that it gets lost. Um, so with Ish, I decided that the lesson I, would, I could teach, just a pretend lesson right now, is teaching the uh, reader, teaching you how to um, identify the characters in our thoughts. Okay, um, I, I would tell my students to um, think about when they notice um, that they're recognizing how what the character might be thinking or feeling. So just flipping through. Ramon loved to draw. And now I put a stopping point right here that says. As I read, put your hand on your head when you feel like you recognize what the character's thinking. I like hand signals because it's it's keeping the kids interactive and engaged in the text. So put your hand on your head when you can recognize what the character might be thinking. Ramon likes love to draw. Or thinking or feeling, sorry. So you might be recognizing that the character likes to draw. This is how he feels. He feels happy with drawing. Anytime anything, anywhere. One day, Ramon was drawing a vase of flowers. His brother, Leon, leaned over his shoulder. Leon burst out laughing, saying, what is that? Ramon could not even answer. He just crumpled up the drawing and threw it across the room. Leon's laughter haunted Ramon. He kept trying to make his drawings look right, but they never did. Now, I'm putting my head on my or my hand on my head to recognize that I am noticing that I can guess how he's feeling. After many months and many crumpled sheets of paper, Ramon put his pencil down and said, I'm done. Now my post-it here is a stopping point where I'm reminding myself to tell the readers, to, to tell my students to turn and talk. And I'm going to ask them, what do you think Ramon is thinking or feeling right now? And I'm going to give them a chance to talk about that and reflect on it. Hi, Heather. Um, now, I'm going to stop here for this model lesson and just say that's as simple as it is. It is finding your teaching point, finding a rich mentor text, 
planning out three to five authentic places where you would be using that skill or strategy and listen to your own inner reader, model it for the students and give the students plenty of opportunities to practice doing it in your text. Now, in my next video, I'm going to be talking about how an interactive read aloud fits in with your full reading block. So uh, for now, for today, just like my Facebook page or subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay updated with all of my videos. That's it, everybody. See you later.